Hello and welcome back. This lecture will be an add-on uh, to the previous lecture where we didn't uh, where we covered actually the external identities, which is nothing but your B2B specific, A specific uh, blade. So this is where you can you know simply search for uh, external identities and you will be getting as the external identities. This is where you can manage the complete uh, B2B specific configurations which includes your terms and conditions and policies can be configured including the user flows can be configured the way we configured for our B2C. Similar configurations you can do it within the with the help of your external identities. So uh, let's get started with the uh, external identities. So what you can do is within this you can go and uh, directly configure your Google, Facebook or new SAML or uh, Windows uh, Server Federated uh, Authentication Specific Providers. So when you click on uh, either any of these authentications, very similar the way we have done for our B2C, um, similar configuration we have to do for Client ID and Secret ID so that it can authenticate for the Google. Similar fashion you can go for Facebook and any other uh, specific identities also you need to give the same keys uh, method so that it can work either it is a Windows Federator or whatever authentication protocols you can choose later point you need to give their uh, social identity provider information to be you know, added here and coming back to uh, your external collaboration settings this is a key uh, where you can configure what kind of permissions you want to you know, grant for your users let's say guest users permissions are limited by doing this yes users that's the guest users cannot see uh, who all are the user accounts that exist within your Azure Active Directory tenant so by if you set it as a no even though he's a guest user he can see all the user accounts which are coming from Azure Active Directory so which is uh, definitely security risk so uh, since we are we just wanted the user to be collaborated but not to enumerate our users in the groups and other directly uh, resources we don't want to do that so uh, this is one of the security uh, specific uh, configuration similarly admins and users in the guest uh, specific role can invite yes no or you can configure here and members can invite yes no and guests can invite even the guest also can invite yes no and enable email one-time password for the guest so if you remember you know I was talking about uh, the complete uh, thing uh, over B2B as we will have the Microsoft identity that's what we try to talk but what happens is uh, with the with, with respect to, to when you enable the email uh, one-time password for guest which is in a preview at this point of time but uh, in future what would happen is if it is you know from the preview to public uh, uh, public view or public release so what would happen is the users instead of creating their own Microsoft identity or Microsoft ID it goes to the either Google or whatever the authentication provider and they from there it will actually validate over the email with a simple email one-time uh, passcode and with that it can be validated so that also users can collaborate uh, into B2B case and coming back to the guest itself, uh, self-service sign-in via a group flows can be configured. Uh, if you are, um, if you are, this is again a preview feature. That's why I didn't cover it actually in that. But it's very similar to uh, the uh, user flows that we discussed within B2C configuration. And also, uh, you can, you know, uh, collaboration restricted can be done. If you want to you know uh, restrict, you can give the target. Uh, only domains can be only collaborated or deny invitations or allow invitations uh, to be sent to any domain all that can be uh, configured so from down to top uh, it goes from most restrictive to most inclusive configurations can be done and uh, let's come back to your know, user attributes that what uh, what we talked about uh, when we try to user try to sign up we can configure uh, the specific user uh, inputs like the zip code or the city all that configurations can be done and coming back to the user flows the same thing which we have already talked into b2c configuration similar configuration here also you can do within the user flows and coming back to the terms of use uh, this is where you can say that when a user is going to log in he you can offer them to have some of the terms and conditions to be uh, signed in and all that 
uh, can be granted here let's say uh, the uploaded documents of your terms and uh, conditions with the name please accept the terms or something like that and your terms for your company name and your complete document uh, sample uh, can be you know, uploaded and the language and uh, the users must have to be you know, accepted and if they have to re-accept for the consent purpose for regulatory purpose you can grant that because we're talking about the third party users uh, or the uh, different identity users who are again and again they're trying to log in so it needs to attend some kind of regulatory when it comes to the auditing purpose so you can give uh, the number of days they have to review these or uh, these specific terms and conditions and say accept and also for these users we can set a conditional policy uh, saying that these or the users must have to be accepted the conditions so that uh, the terms and conditions will be accepted or something like that you can always configure this configuration and uh, you can also go for the access uh, reviews where you can uh, check for the current uh, access uh, specific uh, information within the uh, within the Azure AD or with the B2B specific view so that you know that what user is accessing what uh, level of permissions of who are coming as a collaboration purpose so this concludes uh, a very basic and high level of understanding about the B2B concept I hope this is useful for you. Thank you for watching this.